Um, well, I think the clear message um, for the need for action has got through. So it was very interesting. There were multiple stakeholders on that uh, conversation. Um, and it's and it's clear that there are multiple initiatives underway and all those stakeholders involved from consumers, energy suppliers, industrial users, and of course, manufacturers like MHI, um, that they have certain different needs, but many of the demands are quite closely aligned um, in terms of needing some security and certainty as we move into this transition uh, process. So one in particular is obviously uh, the need for continued energetic support from the UK government uh, to allow businesses and consumers to uh, to join the acceleration of the effort required and to understand still i think a lot of consumers don't necessarily understand the need um to manage where their energy comes from and uh, the details of the supply chain and the uh the need to to, to decarbonize or, or, or bring zero carbon to that supply chain and whilst the uk government is providing significant support in in many areas um it needs to continue to focus uh, on support around you know, carbon pricing, regulatory environment, and continued funding of, of the feasibility and the demonstrator level opportunities. Um, you know, I know, for example, since the, uh, the conversation we had, um, the government has delayed the, um, the publication of their hydrogen strategy. Um, so from what was a very strong start in the UK and lots of leading announcements, um, you know, five years ago, uh, th there's a view that the momentum needs to be maintained. Um, and that's not, you know, uh, begging. MHI, for example, has invested strongly in many technologies, um, but the energy market is changing and it's important to get that understanding across. Um, and our customers need uh, an understanding of the long-term regulatory environment um, so that they can build business cases to invest and to, to support the, uh, the transition. Um, well, I think I, I would just tweak that very slightly. So some of these are not necessarily new technologies. They are being newly implemented, but they've been developed over many years. And a lot of them use um, you know, existing proven technology. Uh, and in my view, the focus is in three particular areas, uh, carbon capture and storage, which um, will help decarbonize existing assets um, and allow them to be used um, into the future. Um, and secondly, obviously close to my um, role are the technologies that enable us to, to manage and to make the fuel transition from uh, fossil fuels to cleaner fuels. Uh, hydrogen is the, is, is the clear example, um, but also potentially other, uh, others like ammonia um, and, and so on. Um, and finally, um, energy storage technologies um, at many sky time scales, obviously from hourly, daily, um, up to, to fully seasonal level storage. Uh, because overall, there is going to be a need to manage and retain the flexibility of supply, as well as the security of supply. Um, and final point really on that, that, that sort of came through, I thought was the, um, the energy transition to zero carbon is all about efficient use of all our resources. And, and that includes our existing resources. Um, so it's important to, to reuse and repurpose our existing resources, which represent some sort of retained activity and are a massive asset. Um, and we need to use those as much as possible uh, before consigning them to the scrap heap, which has costs in itself. Um, yeah, I, I think the key challenges are what I alluded to before is we're moving into a transition, we're transitioning into a, a, a new market system and no one really knows where the players are going to be, where the, um, the real assets are going to be and how that market is going to, to, to turn out in, in five years and in the longer term. And in order to invest and supply and in order for us to supply our customers and ultimately the end users and the consumers, we need to be able to put business cases in place. Um, and so to enable that planning, there must be some level of confidence uh, in the likely demand regulatory environment. The UK government can help manage that from a, that risk process by helping to support some of the demonstrator projects and the feasibility studies, which are very um, um, front end and, and therefore the, the risks are perceived to be much higher. 
Um, and, and we're seeing that our involvement in zero carbon Humber is, is very important on several levels. Um, it's really useful. The government has, has shown its support there um, and that we've got assets there where we're working to support both carbon capture and possibly the transition to, uh, to hydrogen firing of, of gas turbines. Uh, and this is really important for us to demonstrate our capabilities for ourselves and our customers to build business cases and to evolve the existing technologies into solutions um, for the future. And again, I'll come back to what I said before, it's important to maintain momentum and continuity here. Uh, companies like MHI can continue to invest and evolve our products. We're talking again in, in the zero carbon Humber uh, around 30% hydrogen uh, bleed into gas turbine firing. And that could move easily to, to 100% hydrogen combustion using uh, novel technologies, which are currently under development and coming through the R&D cycle at, at uh, uh, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries. Thank you.